Hello and welcome to Oak Island Theories. In this video, we are going to explore the theory that the Money Pit contains the contents of a French pay ship bound for the fortress of Louisbourg, and that the men who buried it comprised a rogue faction of the French colonial empire. Let's take a look. There are many exotic Oak Island theories which report that the Money Pit treasure was interred by some group or individual whose presence in the waters off Oak Island has never been officially confirmed. One theory which is firmly grounded in historical reality, however, contends that the Oak Island mystery has something to do with the folks who held a tenuous grip on Nova Scotia for a century and a half, members of the French Empire. Although they were by no means the first Europeans to lay eyes on North America, the French became the first early modern Europeans to colonize the continent when Breton explorer Jacques Cartier founded a short-lived settlement at the site of what would one day become Quebec City in 1497. A little more than a century later, French explorer Pierre Dugas Sirdemont established France's second North American colony, the settlement of Port Royal on the southeastern shores of what is now Nova Scotia. Three years later, in 1608, explorer Samuel de Champlain re-established Cartier's long-abandoned settlement and officially founded the vast North American colony known as New France. Throughout the 1600s, New France grew into four separate yet centrally governed districts. The most significant of these was Canada, a territory along the St. Lawrence River, which included the cities of Quebec, Montreal, and Trois-Rivières. Southwest of Canada, along the watershed of the Mississippi River, from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico, stretched a sprawling wild domain called Louisiana. The French had another little colony called Placentia, located on the Avalon Peninsula of southeastern Newfoundland. The fourth and final subsection of New France, the subsection most relevant to the French theory of Oak Island, was the colony of Acadia a territory consisting of what are now Canada's maritime provinces, Nova Scotia included, and much of the state of Maine. The French, of course, were not the only Europeans to take an interest in the northern reaches of the New World. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, the colonists of New France found themselves fighting a seemingly endless series of wars with the First Nations allies of Dutch and English colonists, and later on, with their age-old enemies, the English themselves. The first of these conflicts, collectively called the Beaver Wars, comprised a century-long succession of brutal battles and massacres, motivated by the North American fur trade. These wars pitched the colonists of New France and their fur trading allies, the Huron and various Algonquian nations of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River, against the powerful Iroquois Confederacy, an alliance of five indigenous nations whose territory constituted the forests of what is now upstate New York whose trading partners were the Dutch and the English. The Beaver Wars of the 17th century were punctuated by occasional skirmishes between French and English colonists, some of which coincided with larger wars being waged on the European continent or Great Britain. For example, in 1613, Samuel Argall, a military man from the newly established English colony of Virginia, captured and razed the English village of Port Royal, the capital of French Acadia. Later on, in 1629, while the English were busy assisting a garrison of Huguenot, or French Protestant rebels, who were fighting the French army at the Siege of La Rochelle, a band of English adventurers decided to capture the city of Quebec. And in 1654, a combined force of New English militiamen, New England being the four northeasternmost of the Thirteen Colonies, and a company of professional English soldiers sent by Oliver Cromwell, the leader of the short-lived Commonwealth of England, seized Port Royal again, the Acadian capital having been returned to France in 1632. In the autumn of 1688, Prince William of Orange, the leader of the Dutch Republic and a lifelong enemy of France's King Louis XIV, stole the English throne in a bloodless coup d'etat, becoming King William III of England. King William immediately thrust England into the ongoing Nine Years' War, a conflict fought between France and the League of Augsburg an unlikely alliance consisting of the Dutch Republic, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, and now England. This conflict spilled over into North America, merging with the Beaver Wars to become what is known as King William's War. King William's War, fought from 1688 to 1697, was the first of four great colonial wars to be fought between France and Britain on North American soil. 
From 1702 to 1713, New France and England's 13 colonies, which stretched down the Atlantic coast of what is now the United States, clashed in Queen Anne's War, the North American theater of the War of Spanish Succession. The conflict between the French and the English resumed in King George's War, fought from 1744 to 1748, the North American theater of the War of Austrian Succession. During these wars, Acadia, Newfoundland, and the shores of Hudson Bay, the latter a British-owned territory, constantly changed hands between the British and the French, although the Thirteen Colonies and New France remained securely in the possessions of the kingdoms for which they were named. The last and largest colonial war fought between France and Great Britain in North America was the French and Indian War, fought from 1754 to 1763, one of the many theaters of the global Seven Years' War. This conflict ended with New France's sound defeat, cementing Great Britain's near-total supremacy in northeastern North America for the first time in history. Almost every iteration of the French theory of Oak Island proposes that the Money Pit was constructed by either French or New French military officers who fought in one of North America's four great colonial wars. One of the most popular of the theories regarding a French connection to the Oak Island mystery contends that the Money Pit treasure consists of the contents of a pay ship destined for the fortress of Louisbourg, a French stronghold which once stood on the northeastern shore of Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island. In 1713, at the conclusion of Queen Anne's War, King Louis XIV of France, Queen Anne of Great Britain, and other participants in the larger War of Spanish Succession signed the Treaty of Utrecht. This agreement stipulated in part that France cede the Acadian Peninsula, i.e. mainland Nova Scotia, her holdings in Newfoundland, and her recently conquered territory surrounding Hudson Bay to Britain. In return, France was allowed to keep Ile Royale, or Cape Breton Island, Prince Edward Island, the province of Canada, and the colony of Louisiana. This redrawing of the maps meant that Ile Royale was France's only territory situated on the Atlantic Ocean. This fact, coupled with Cape Breton Island's proximity to both the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, an economically important fishing ground, and the mouth of the St. Lawrence River, the gateway to Canada, transformed Ile Royale into a territory of utmost strategic importance to New France. In an effort to protect the island from future assaults, France set about constructing an enormous stone fortress on its northeastern shore. This stronghold, which would take 27 years to build, was named Louisbourg, in honor of King Louis XIV. The fortress of Louisbourg was finally completed in 1740, the year in which the War of Austrian Succession broke out in Europe. Four years later, when Britain finally entered the conflict and declared war on France, the garrison at Louisbourg used the opportunity to attack Fort William Augustus a British military outpost situated on the northeastern shore of the Nova Scotian Peninsula, which threatened Louisbourg's supply lines. On May 23, 1744, 350 new French Marines, militiamen, and allied Wabanaki Braves departed from Louisbourg and conducted a surprise attack on the British fort. Completely unprepared for the assault, the British surrendered after enduring a brief bombardment from French cannons. 50 English families were subsequently taken captive and brought to Louisbourg. Following the successful raid on Fort William Augustus, the governor of Ile Royale tasked a local French missionary named Jean-Louis de Loutre with raising a war party of Mi'kmaq and Maliseet braves and leading them in an assault on Annapolis Royal, formerly Port Royal, the old Acadian capital. Le Loutre managed to convince 300 members of his native congregation to go on the warpath against the English, and on June 12, 1744, he and his men stormed the fort. Although the attackers managed to kill two of the British defenders in the brief skirmish that ensued, they were driven back on the fourth day of the siege by 70 reinforcements sent from Boston. Two months later, the French decided to launch a second attack on Annapolis Royal. Led by Captain Francois de Vier, the officer who had led the attack on Fort William Augustus, 600 French soldiers, Acadian settlers, and native warriors set up camp not far from the British fort. After a failed attempt to coerce the defenders to surrender peacefully, the French began to bombard the fort with musket fire. After a six-day siege, which resulted in a number of British casualties, the French were driven back by an elite unit of British reinforcements, newly arrived from New England. In the spring of 1745, the government of Massachusetts decided to strike back at the French by attempting a raid on Louisbourg. 
supplemented by 500 militiamen from Connecticut and 450 colonists from New Hampshire. 3,250 colonial soldiers from Massachusetts set sail from Boston in early March 1745, bound for the French stronghold. As they approached Ile Royale, the colonial troops found that they were precluded from the waters off Louisburg by sea ice. After waiting for nearly two months, the ice sheets began to melt and break up, and the New Englanders began their assault. First, they attacked Port Toulouse, present-day St. Peter's, Nova Scotia, the French settlement closest to the Nova Scotian peninsula. After a first failed attempt, a 270-man detachment of colonial militiamen and British regulars captured Port Toulouse from its 23 French marines and an unknown number of Acadian colonists and Mi'kmaq warriors. The New Englanders proceeded up the eastern coast of Ile Royale, destroying the Acadian settlements of Petite de Grat, Ile Madame, and Nerechac along the way. On May 11th, they arrived near Louisbourg and managed to disembark despite some resistance from the hugely outnumbered French defenders. That accomplished, they set about systematically destroying a number of outlying fishing villages, during which they engaged in a number of skirmishes with French troops and Mi'kmaq braves. Once the settlements had been destroyed, the last obstacle standing between the English force and the fortress of Louisbourg was the Island Battery, a well-armed stone fortification built on an island fronting the bay in which the fortress was nestled. It took the British six weeks to take the battery, whereupon they finally turned their attention towards Louisbourg itself. The 1745 Siege of Louisbourg was a 47-day exchange of cannon fire. The British eventually managed to haul some artillery up the grassy hills which overlooked Louisbourg, perhaps the fortress's greatest weakness, and began to bombard its walls with impunity. The French defenders had suffered from low morale before the siege even began, as supplies were low and the soldiers' promised pay was many months overdue. Their only hope lay in Paul Marine de la Malgue, a new French general who was expected to relieve the fortress with 500 French soldiers and 700 Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Huron warriors. Unfortunately for the defenders, Malgue's reinforcements were repelled by the British besiegers at the naval battle of Tatamagooch, fought on June 15, 1745. The disheartened defenders managed to hold out for another 13 days before finally surrendering the fortress of Louisbourg to the British. Some Oak Island theorists suspect that the long overdue payment that the defenders of Louisbourg never saw may lie at the bottom of the money pit, interred by the well-meaning crew of a treasure ship which had been blown off course during a storm. In 1748, the War of Austrian Succession came to an end, resulting in its belligerents signing the Treaty of Isle Chapelle. This document stipulated, among other things, that the British return the fortress of Louisbourg to the French. With the loss of this new stronghold, the British decided to build their own fortified town in Nova Scotia, which they named Halifax, in honour of a prominent British Earl. The local Acadian settlers and native Mi'kmaq Indians of the Nova Scotian Peninsula, who occupied most of the region outside Halifax and Annapolis Royal, took issue with the location at which the British decided to establish Halifax. In 1749, they began attacking British outposts throughout the province, sparking a six-year conflict called Father Le Luto's War, named after the French missionary who encouraged the local Acadians and Mi'kmaq to go on the warpath against the British. No sooner had Father Le Luto's War ended than another conflict erupted on the mainland when British troops attacked French forts built on disputed territory. Known as the French and Indian War, this frontier clash gradually escalated into an enormous global conflict known as the Seven Years' War. England and France once again found themselves squaring off in Europe and their holdings around the world. In 1757, the British attempted to launch an attack on Louisbourg, knowing that they could not gain access to the St. Lawrence River and Quebec beyond with the fortress in French hands. The expedition was thwarted by the French Navy and a terrible Atlantic storm, and the British resolved to make a second attempt the following year. In the summer of 1758, 14,000 red-coated soldiers and 12,000 sailors and marines launched a massive assault on the fortress of Louisbourg. The stronghold's 7,000 defenders put up a vigorous resistance, but were eventually overwhelmed by the superior British firepower. After an 18-day siege, the French surrendered Louisbourg to the British for the last time. The fall of Louisbourg allowed the British to sail up the St. Lawrence River the following year and conduct a three-pronged assault on the city of Quebec. 
The subsequent British victory in the Battle of the Plains of Abraham was a death blow to New France, which King Louis XV would cede to Great Britain once and for all in the 1763 Treaty of Paris. Some Oak Island theorists believe that, prior to the 1758 Siege of Louisbourg, a company of French engineers spirited the Louisbourg treasury over to Oak Island and buried it, loath to allow it to fall into British hands in the event that the fortress was taken. One artifact which suggests an 18th century French military presence on Oak Island is the cap badge found by Gary Drayton and Jack Begley on Oak Island's Lot 21 in Season 6, Episode 5. This badge is decorated with a fleur-de-lis, the stylized lily associated with the French monarchy. Archaeologist Laird Niven, who examined the artifact, opined that it might be a piece of a French grenadier's hat. In 1931, Chapels Limited discovered an axe head in the chapel shaft at a depth of around 116 feet. Frederick Blair observed that this artifact resembled an Acadian axe that he had seen at the museum at Annapolis Royal. As Acadian settlers were of French extraction and historically demonstrated allegiance to the French crown, this discovery might constitute evidence of the French theory. In Season 5, Episodes 5 and 6, two human bones were discovered in the spoils of Borehole H8. These bones were later determined to belong to two individuals of European and Middle Eastern extraction, respectively. In Season 5, Episode 8, the European bone was carbon dated from 1678 to 1764, while the Middle Eastern bone was carbon dated from 1682 to 1736. Both of these date ranges are consistent with certain iterations of the French theory. In Season 5, Episode 8, we learned that Zena Halpern's mysterious map of Oak Island contained a note in the margins designating the document as a gift to one Monsieur Francois de la Rochefoucauld, ostensibly a member of the noble French family La Rochefoucauld. This discovery appears to implicate French agents in the Oak Island mystery. In Season 5, Episode 10, Gary Drayton and Rick Lagina discovered a small lead cross on Smith's Cove with a square hole punched through its top. Although the show, in subsequent episodes, attempted to draw connections between this artifact and the Knights Templar theory, a recent discovery in New Brunswick suggests that the cross might actually be evidence that the French were behind the Oak Island mystery. In June 2019, while examining a field at the edge of the St. John River near St. John, New Brunswick, on which a monument to the 3rd Field Artillery Regiment of the Royal Canadian Army Reserve was to be erected, Canadian reservists discovered a number of tiny lead crosses which bear a striking resemblance to the artifact discovered at Smith's Cove. Archaeologists determined that the crosses were of 16th century French origin, stating that they likely have some sort of connection with Fort Latour, a French fur trading post established near present-day St. John, New Brunswick in 1631 by the governor of Acadia. Perhaps the lead cross discovered at Smith's Cove is also a 16th century French artifact deposited by the original flood tunnel builders. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel, please check out the Oak Island Encyclopedia by clicking the link in the description.